Uh, thank you, Mary. <laughs> so, for our first uh, live in-person gathering since uh, lockdown days, I wanted to look at the topic of half empty, half full, or overflowing. So if you hadn't guessed, I'm kind of referring to this idea people talk about that some of us in life go through life seeing things from the point of view of the glass being half empty all the time, and others see it as the glass is half full. And to that I added, and some see it as overflowing. Now, if we were to be quizzed about signs of mind, and we were asked if this is a philosophy that promotes the half empty, half full, or overflowing mindset, what do you think would be the answer? Well, if you say half full, I would say, yeah, yeah. You know, we, we do look at, you know, what's, what's there, what's good. If you said overflowing, well, yes, absolutely. You know, we're all about accentuating the positive and how life is overflowing with goodness. If you said half empty, I'd have to say yes. What? <laughs> half empty? I can hear the questions that are going on. Is, is Reverend Mark crazy? Does he not even understand this philosophy? No wonder he's retiring at the end of this month. I mean, <laughs> he never got it, and he's faked it for 20 years. <laughs> he just doesn't want to get caught. <laughs> so here's the thing is, generally speaking, when we talk about those who have a glass half empty mentality, you know, we're talking about individuals who are never satisfied that are generally ungrateful, that there's always something that's missing from their lives, always something that's wrong. But let's be clear that these concepts of half empty, half full, or overflowing really are human concepts. They don't really hold up as spiritual truths because we teach that God is fully and equally present in every moment, every being, every place, everything, including each of us. So there can't be any more or less, you know, half or whole. It's, it's just all one, all there. And, you know, the new science of quantum physics has proven now that we have instruments that can really penetrate into uh, matter and really look at what matter is composed of, that they have proven that at a certain point, as you go deeper and deeper and deeper, that all you see is energy, and that you, at a certain point, you can't differentiate where one object or another begins. It all is kind of made of the same stuff, which sort of supports our philosophy, doesn't it? <laughs> However, our human minds really can't conceive of infinity. So we use finite terms, finite ideas to navigate through this finite dimension, through our human experience. Now in Science of Mind, we emphasize that it's, it's not really the idea itself, but it's our perception behind it. It's what we're telling ourselves behind that idea that has a direct bearing on our life experience, positively or negatively. And so I'd like to accentuate the positive of each of these points of view. So does anyone, anyone here taken acting classes or observed acting classes where you were given a certain line to say and you were asked to say it in different ways to give it different meanings. So, if we have the mindset, it's Gatorade, by the way, if you're wondering. I just want to make sure it could be seen out there. <laughs> Looking at that, you go, wow, 
the glass is half full. There's, there's so much of this good Gatorade in here. Or the glass is half full. I better make sure we don't lose any because it's, you know, look, it's, it's already only half full. Or the glass is half empty. Or the glass is half empty. There's room for more. And then, of course, there's the idea of the glass overflowing. So when we look at the glass half full, you know, the mindset that we say we want to have more of a glass half full attitude is that we're showing appreciation, gratitude for what we have in our lives. And certainly in Science of Mind, do we not over and over again emphasize the power of gratitude, that what you focus on increases? And so the more you feel grateful for that which is there, the more it expands, the greater good you attract. But let's look at that idea right there. If I say that there's a potential for more, that as I focus on being grateful for what's there, that that's going to increase. The whole idea of increase is based on the idea that there's greater good yet to come. There's more to be revealed. That can be the positive aspect of looking at the glass half empty. It's how we're looking at it. Okay, if we're looking at it like, wow, there's potential for even more, then we're seeing it in a very constructive way. It doesn't need to be negative. Now, in science of mind, I think we're accused a lot of being the philosophy that, you know, is Pollyanna in the sense of just saying everything is good and denying when, you know, something is missing, when there's an absence of love or when there are negative conditions. And that's not what we're about at all. But what we say is where there's an absence of love, an absence of abundance, an absence of something that apparently in the world, there's a potential, there's a potential for more good to come forth. That anything in the human world is relative. God is absolute and God is always there to reveal more of its goodness where we're not seeing it. So we state that these conditions are changeable and that there's greater good to be revealed. So where it's not being expressed, that's our opportunity to know, OK, there's this much love. There's that potential for there to be love. How do we call forth more love into this situation, into the world? Now, when we come to the glass overflowing, philosophy. I'm not going to demonstrate, OK, because it would get very messy. <laughs> and we don't like messy. <laughs> but as I said earlier, these ideas of half empty, half full, big, small, all of those are human ideas. No matter what level of good we feel we're experiencing and how much we feel there's potential for more, there's a certain degree that we are the vessel that holds a certain amount of God's. I mean, we have the potential within us, but we already are able to demonstrate a certain level of love, of givingness, of joy, of peace, of abundance. And depending on what size I choose for the container, if I were to pour this in, what would happen? It would start overflowing. Now, to me, that speaks to the idea that no matter where we are on our journey and what's going on in our lives, that we may, in some ways, feel that we're experiencing lack, or there's a lack of some of God's nature being expressed in our lives or in the world. Our divine nature is such that we always, always have something to give, always. We always have something to pour forth into life toward others. And so I believe the ideal is to be able to 
incorporate all these pers perspectives of you know, half empty, half full, overflowing into our lives. We want to be grateful for the ways that God's goodness is present in our lives right now as love, as peace, as creativity, as abundance. No matter what's going on, there are some ways that you are experiencing these aspects of God's nature at any given time. And then to also have a joyful anticipation of the ever greater good that's there to be revealed. Always feeling a sense, even if life is going great, there's even more to come. To have that idea and that we always have the ability to share of that goodness of God within us with others. And I think when we have a balance of all three, then we're really, really in the flow of the divine. And you know, there's some lessons in life, have you noticed, that you go through an experience and it's something that it was so profound, so such a deep experience that you just keep learning from it over and over. Uh, I call it the experience that keeps on giving. And for me, one of those that you've heard me speak about before is when my mom had her stroke. Okay? My mom loved her independence. She never wanted to be a burden on any of her children. She loved her freedom. She was very mobile and active. She loved studying language. And she would spend hours just reading through the dictionary or the thesaurus as entertainment. Huh? OK, but <laughs> then this stroke occurred that left her wheelchair bound, speech challenged. She had expressive aphasia, humanly, for her and for all of us that were in that experience, it felt like the glass went from maybe half full to, and I'm not going to pour it out, but barely a few drops at the bottom. It just felt like so much good had just been ripped away. And in the midst of that, it was really a challenge for all of us, but as a family, we rallied around to find solutions, you know? And then as I was really observing what was going on, you know, I was noticing, look at the doctors, the social workers, the caregivers who are there to support and help us through this process. We all really became aware, it was so tangible, how much love and caring was there. And as we did that, and I know as I did my uh, work in consciousness around that, just recognizing how much of God was there. It went from feeling so depleted of good to an experience that really felt like, yes, the glass is really half full. There's so much good here. Never losing sight of the fact that, and yes, there's more to be revealed. You know, it went from an experience of feeling so bleak and dark to moments as we found solutions. Or I just even remember having to work out my schedule differently at work so I could take mom to her physical therapy. And at one point, I had to take her down to Orange County. We were having fun in the midst of this experience. We were having fun. It was joyful. It was playful. And yet, there were other things to be resolved, like finding her an ideal place to live, which did come our way because we were open to the greater good. So we moved to that place of glass half empty where we're grateful, glass, um, glass half full, I mean, where we're grateful, glass half empty, there's greater good to be revealed here. But the clincher for me was when my mom had settled into her assisted living place that she loved and had many people around her that loved her, she asked me at one day, she just said, why am I here? You know, what, what do I have to give? And I pointed out how every step of the way, every facility she had been in, in the, assist, um, the rehab facilities, the hospital, when it was time for her to leave, people were sad 
they generally, genuinely loved caring for her. And in her current residence, she was so adored by the staff. I said, you're kind. You love interacting with people. I said, you're a blessing. You're a blessing to these people. And I'll just never forget how that's when she realigned with that sense of, in her situation, she could still have that experience of overflow, that she had something to give. We always have something to give. So looking here in the sanctuary, those of you who are out there remotely can't see this, but we could look and say, OK, the sanctuary isn't even really half full based on the number of seats we have here, but boy, is it nice to have you here, and boy, is it nice to be together. And I think we all look forward to the idea of we will be gathering and there will be more of us and we'll feel more of that energy and hopefully we'll continue to have many of you joining us on Zoom and Facebook Live even when we get beyond this phase because we feel your presence out there. I, I really mean that. Um, there's so much to celebrate and yet so much to be open to. And you may not realize it. You may think you just came to the Wednesday evening service because you finally got to get out of the house and come to church. Your being here is creating an energy. Those of you who are online with us, you are giving something just by being with us. So I would invite us to ask ourselves periodically, what good in our lives are we taking for granted for which we could feel more grateful? What aspects of God's nature can we open and anticipate to be more fully expressed? Areas that maybe we realize we could step up and express more fully. And in what ways, whatever our life circumstances, can we share the love, the joy, the kindness, the goodness of God with others, moment by moment, day by day? In reflecting on these questions, you can become aware of how every moment you have something to celebrate, you have new, new dimensions of good to anticipate, and you have the ability to joyously share bountifully. So let's take a moment to turn our attention inward. And I invite you to, for the purpose of this gathering right now, just focus on the God quality of love. And reflect on ways that love is expressed through you beings you love, activities you love to engage in. And try to get out of the mindset of small or bigger. It's all love, however it's expressed through you. Allow yourself to feel grateful. Allow yourself to feel grateful for those who offer you their love, their friendship, their support. And now I invite you to reflect on ways that love could be more fully expressed or expressed in new ways. some new and wonderful way to experience love, some healing of areas where love seems absent or not fully expressed. And just feel the potential for that next level of experience to come forth. And now think of the ways that you're able to share love. Simple kindnesses. Putting love into things that you do. 
how that's always there for you to share, to pour forth. And so allow yourself to acknowledge how every moment you are a vessel through which love and all of God's attributes are realized. You are a vessel through which all of God's, God's attributes can be realized and expressed in new ways. You are a vessel where God's nature can always be generously shared. And so from this place, let's join together in knowing that that one life of God is absolutely the power and the presence of life itself that animates everything in creation that is fully and equally present throughout this universe, that it's the very life that animates each and every one of us, that we are all expressions of that life of God. And so wherever we are focused only on the idea of half full or half empty, where we're forgetting about the overflow, I know that we open right now to knowing that every moment there's good there to be grateful for, there's greater good to anticipate, there's so much good to share and celebrate. And I know we are moved into that consciousness that is aware of all these different perspectives simultaneously. I know that as we gather together to know the truth of God's presence, we can know the truth collectively for all those who are struggling with the idea of change in life, for a greater knowingness of God's nature being changeless and always there to be experienced in new ways, for anyone experiencing any kind of health challenge, that that vibration of health and wholeness lies at the center of each and every one of us. And it is there to reveal the pathways into that greater experience of well-being, that that vibration of God in all of us is one of total creativity of giving and receiving. And as we open to it, anyone that is feeling that they don't have anything to give, that they are guided to the perfect right places to give of their unique talents, of God's way of expressing through them where they are valued, where they are making contributions and feeling fulfilled. We know that that vibration of God is limitless and therefore anyone experiencing lack as we join and know the truth that God is there to provide for every need, something shifts and needs are met to the point of being able to generously give back. And we remember that that nature of love, at, at God at its core, is love itself. And as we know that truth, we are able to expand in our capacity to give and receive love for ourselves, for others, and we know that that impulse of love is always for greater good. And so let us set our intentions for greater good for ourselves in silence. And so we know that whatever these intentions may be, greater good for ourselves, for loved ones, for situations in the world, that we're feeling the vibration of God for a greater realization of itself throughout creation. As we know that God is there at the center of all these situations, good is revealed. And together we declare, I accept these truths for myself and all beings everywhere. And so we bless our church, we bless all churches everywhere, synagogues, temples, mosques, ashrams, all paths to God, knowing that all paths lead to the same God, the same truth. And so it's with a heart just filled with gratitude for knowing this truth that I release this word knowing it is so in the mind of God, and so it is, and together we say, Amen. Yes, I'm only here for God, no more.
Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Mary. So this is the time in our service for our affirmative giving. Uh, those of you who are here in the sanctuary, if you want to make a donation uh, with a check or some, uh, however you want to do that in person, we will have boxes in the foyer where you can drop them off as you leave the sanctuary. Uh, for those of you who are online with us, reminder that you can call us uh, after the service. We'll be here for about 15 minutes afterwards to take a donation over the phone uh, via credit or debit card. You also have the option of going to our website, nhcrs.org forward slash give, and that takes you straight to our donation page where you can set, uh, do a one-time donation or uh, you can set up recurring donations. And you also have the option, I always have to remind myself the number, of texting the word GIVE to area code 818-457-3419. And so with that, thank you in all the ways that you can continue to support our community here online. Let's hold our gifts, gifts to our hearts as we say together. From the love of pure spirit within me, I bless this gift. I send it forth to heal and bless and prosper. It is evidence of my faith and belief. It does good work in the world and returns to me multiplied abundantly. Thank you. So, as we wind down our service, I want to begin by saying thank you to all those who are served this service this evening um, out there in virtual land. Thank you to practitioners Liz Racy and Bob Line for holding vigil for us this evening. To our Zoom team, Brenda Jordan, Mark Kroll, and Alma Alvarez, thank you so much for all being out there, and Melissa Allen, once again, thank you for your support on Facebook Live. Here in the sanctuary, 
thank you to Adam, who is back there, always making sure we're seen and heard up here. Yes. <laughs> Greg, who is here to usher us in and greet us, and thank you, thank you, thank you. for First time we've got, had a chance to thank that person in over a year, yay. <laughs> Thank you, Doreen, who's been uh, out there in tech land, making sure everything's working correctly. Uh, Blair, who's been here to support us through the process as well. To Nikki, who's on camera too. And Mary, thank you so much for the beautiful, beautiful musical support. And to all of you for being here and all of you who are out there in virtual land. <laughs> so. Quickly, a uh, reminder, as far as the donations, uh, you can call 818-762-7566 for up to 15 minutes after service. nhcrs.org forward slash give is the website, or for um, the uh, texting, it's to the word give to 818-457-3419. So, uh, as far as prayer with a practitioner, we are not yet doing that in person, but um, if anyone here in the sanctuary would like prayer with a practitioner, give us your name and we can have one contact you or we can see if we can do it in a socially distanced uh, way since there isn't a you know, large, large group of people. Um, on Zoom, you can get prayer with a practitioner. Uh, just ask your Zoom host to hook you up with one of our practitioners to put you in a breakout room where you can get a private session, one-on-one -on -one prayer, uh, what we call a minute miracle. You can email your prayer requests, if you have any, to prayer at nhcrs.org, or call our prayer line, uh, the main office, and it's option number four on the phone to leave a message, and we check those emails and messages to make sure they get out to all our practitioners, so you'll be uplifted in consciousness, I promise you. Uh, so next week, same time, same place, you're welcome to join us in person or again virtually. Meditation starts at 6.50 when we're not having technical issues. <laughs> That's our intention, to start at 6.50, but thank you for all of those who are so dedicated to get us through those problems. And um, service starts at 7 p.m. and my topic will be not so literal. <laughs> so, hope you could join us for that. Our grief support will be meeting this coming Sunday. That group is led by practitioner Carol Winokur, who really does a masterful job of guiding people through any kind of grief process that they're facing. All are welcome. That's on Zoom, 1 p.m. And let's not forget about our very, very special movie night coming up on June 18th here in the sanctuary for those who want to join in person at 7 p.m. and it'll also be available on Zoom. We'll be screening the film Sound of Metal. It was nominated for Best Picture and uh, the event will be hosted by our practitioner Liz Racy and she'll be interviewing her husband Paul for Q&A after the service. Uh, Paul was nominated for Best Supporting Actor this year at the Oscars. So. Uh, such a treat, yeah. What a treat to be able to have the two of them for a discussion afterwards. So um, tickets are $10 uh, for, per person for in-person attendance and $10 per you know, uh, link for those who are joining uh, remotely. And if you're joining remotely, we'll send you a link. I think, I'm not sure the exact number of hours, but I know it expires after 24 hours, so it'll be before you could watch the film a little bit before or at the same time. Um, but you will get that information uh, probably the day before. And uh, in-person attendance continues for 9.45 a.m. service on Sunday and from now on here uh, for Wednesday evening service. And so uh, we're just reminding people on Sundays to please enter from the second parking gate, the one that's at the back. Uh, we don't have this front gate open. There's a lot of noise while the service is going on and we've got the doors open, so. Zoom virtual patio, still available uh, Wednesday before and after service and Sundays as well. The men's group still meeting every Sunday from 11 to 11.30 and all men are welcome. And 
We have our morning meditation. Many of you who are on are on every morning, so it's nice to see you live as well as uh, on Zoom. And um, that's 8 to 8.15, uh, Monday through Saturday. So all the information for the Zoom links uh, can be found on our website, nhcrs.org. With that, I think we just should join in consciousness one more time, because I think we've experienced half full, half empty, and overflowing. <laughs> so let's turn with it. And indeed, how grateful I am for all the ways that that spirit that is ever present, as the good that is here now, as the good that is yet to be revealed, as the good that is always pouring forth from us and around us, has revealed itself to us and through us in our time together. I know that through this experience, we have all been awakened in some way to realize that divine potential at the center of our being and to experience it more fully in our lives. And so I give thanks for the blessings we've received and how they continue to expand and multiply and ripple out into the world as we go forward. And in gratitude for this and so much more, I release this word knowing this so, I let it be, and so it is. And together we say, Amen. And so for those of us who are here, let's stand and join in song one more time. Thanks again for being with us. <laughs>